video we're going to talk about a mindset that helps you as a lead guitar player focus focus better and in return create improvisations that truly speak to the listener in a different kind of way it all has to do with a certain visualization technique we're going to talk all about that grab your guitar we're going to get started right after this Hi, my name is David Wallman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players around the world find their unique voice on the instrument to tell their own personal musical story. And today is one of these concepts that is beneficial for beginners and players who have been playing for decades. It's a mindset, a visualization thing that makes a huge difference. Now, we're gonna use a backing track here, this one that you heard in the intro. This backing track is available for free. The link is below. Just sign up to the free course and you'll get access to all the lessons. I started doing that in 2019. All the lessons on the channel and all the backing tracks free in a clear and simple interface. It's very easy to, to use and you just have to sign up once. All right, so what am I talking about here? I'm talking about following the chords. Now, yeah, sure, you've heard that before, but how do you do that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's take a listen to this backing track here. This backing track is made of two chords, very simple. It's made of an A minor that you're hearing right now. This is A minor, A minor 7, followed by D minor 7. All right. D minor 7, kind of get used to that sound. And then we're going back to A minor 7, and it loops like that. Back to A minor 7. All right, so what do you play over this? Well, there are a lot of different methods, but for the visualization thing to work, we need something simple that we know. So we're gonna go with a pentatonic scale. And the rule of thumb that I'm gonna give you is, I'm sure you've discovered that before, but in most cases over a minor chord, you can play a minor pentatonic scale. Not all the time, sometimes it clashes, but typically we're gonna go with that rule. Minor, minor chord, minor pentatonic scale, major chord, major pentatonic scale. All right, so yes, it requires from you to know that scale, the positions, and the more positions you know, the freer you will be on your instruments. But for now, sit back, relax, understand the concept, and then go to that free download and you'll get all the charts as well. All right, close up time. Here we go. We have an A minor seven first. So we're gonna use that first position of the fretboard, A minor pentatonic here. Uh, starting with the A, visualizing the A on the, the sixth string, fifth fret. We have two notes per string, frets 5-8, five, 5-7, five, 5-7, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, and 5-8. Five, that will fit our A minor 7 chord. Here's the D minor 7, D minor pentatonic. We can use the same position, starting on the 10th fret. Back to A. Now, if you do this, that creates what I like to call the jumpy effect. It kind of jumps around because we're jumping from this position to this one, which can be cool, but because of the nature of the jump, that means that you're really gonna hear when that shift happens, and that kind of breaks the flow of a musical idea. I could start an idea here. And then jump, it breaks the flow. So we're gonna to try to fit these positions in the same slice of the fretboard. That's why knowing all your positions is very helpful. And for that, um, we're gonna use this slice of the fretboard. We're gonna start between frets five and eight. That's the A minor pentatonic in its first position. Nice and easy. And then when we switch to the D minor pentatonic, we need to find a D minor pentatonic within the same area of the fretboard. So that's where, again, knowing the cage system, for example, is super beneficial for that. But this is what we're gonna use in this slice of the fretboard. We're gonna ask ourselves, do we have a D in this area of the fretboard? The, the answer is always yes. So 
yes? <laughs> and it's right here on the fifth string, fifth fret. And if we want to stick to this area of the fretboard, we need a position that will have its root on the fifth string, and that happens on the right side, towards the bridge of the guitar. So we do have a position like that in the minor pentatonic scale, and it's position number four. It's this one right here. So I'm going to start with the root, even though the lowest note of that um, D minor pentatonic is not the root in this case, it's actually the fifth, but I'm going to start here. And um, starting on the fifth string, frets five, followed by eight, five, seven, five, seven, six, eight, and five, eight. If you don't know that position, don't worry. It's in the supplemental content. You can download it below, but just follow along the method first. And then we're going to continue on the low E string. We also have frets eight, five. So all together in that slice of the fretboard, a D minor, Pentatonic would be this. 5 8, 5 8, 5 7, 5 7, 6 8, 5 8. Now that we have this, it's way easier to visualize and, and notice the differences between these two scales, right? We can see that we do have some notes in common. For instance, both of these scales, A minor pentatonic, and D minor pentatonic both have strings 4 and 3 in common. They both have frets 5, 7, 5, 7. So those are not the notes that are really going to uh, be the, the notes um, that are going to give you lots of money, if a note gives you money. <laughs> but they're, they're not the best notes because, well, you play the same ones. That kind of results in uh, the same kind of feeling that you would have if you're playing A minor pentatonic throughout the track. Yeah, it would work, but it maybe wouldn't be that targeted. So maybe don't focus on these, but focus on the differences and being aware of those differences. So for example, as we're transitioning from A minor pentatonic to D minor pentatonic, what you could do is um, decide that, all right, on my, close up time again, on my D minor chord, I'm going to focus on this note, which is the second string. 6th fret, because that note is not found in A minor pentatonic. So that would be a good transitional note. So I'm going to phrase an A minor pentatonic. I'm going to be aware of when the change happens, and on that change I'm going to target this note, which is different. So let's give that a try. So A minor pentatonic. Here it comes. You heard it, right? D minor pentatonic. And the cool thing is that is that you don't almost hear the chord changes without needing the backing track. And when that happens, your improvisation is going to sound more like a theme as opposed to a noodle fest. And it's all about being aware of these notes. So we started simple with minor pentatonic stuff, but we can expand that with modes if we want. We can go as far as we want, but for now we're not going to do that. But that's kind of the, the basic concept. And the cool thing is that if you are playing in a single key, I'm not talking about modulation, but a single key, which is the case here, these two different chords can be matched and found in the same common scale. Well, you can find that scale by blending the A minor pentatonic scale and the D minor pentatonic. And you'd find the A aeolian mode. So that's a blend of both. And it would sound totally fine over the, the backing track. And so forth. Sorry, get carried away, but that's kind of the idea. All right, you know, I told you that you could get this backing track for free with the charts. Well, 
That's true, but that's not entirely true because I also added two additional tracks. Just like that, you've got this, the charts below, um, the backing track, and just follow the pentatonic scale for you to develop that uh, concept. Very, very simple. You can apply that to anything, the blues, rock, heavy metal. It doesn't matter. That's kind of what I, what I have prepared for you today. All right, well, thank you very much for watching this till the end. And if this is your first visit, consider subscribing because every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, a new video like this one comes out, helping guitar players around the world find their unique voice on the instrument. This is your pencil. You're the author. Master the pencil. Tell your story. The author tells the story, not the pencil. Anyways, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, a new video like this one comes out. Subscribe. Thanks so much for watching this. I'll see you very soon. Practice well.